Hello, I'm Midge Rendell, and I'm delighted to speak with you about the Rendell Center's exciting work with elementary students and literature-based mock trials. A literature-based mock trial provides a dynamic opportunity for developing higher level thinking skills, as well as reading, writing, listening, and speaking skills, and provides a vehicle for increasing knowledge of our legal system. Our pilot school has seen significant increases in their English language arts test scores since a school-wide implementation of our literacy-based mock trial. I've had the honor of sitting as the judge in these mock trials and have witnessed the impact they have on enriching the text and increasing the student's comprehension. I bet you're asking, why a literature-based mock trial for your classroom? Well, a literature-based mock trial offers students the opportunity to deepen their understanding of the work of literature while learning about the judicial system. The mock trial is an effective learning tool. It helps students develop confidence, critical thinking skills, teamwork and communication skills, in addition to increasing a student's proficiency in basic skills, such as reading, writing, speaking, analyzing, listening, and reasoning, all in an interactive and engaging environment. Mock trials provide students with a better understanding of the legal system, from the roles of judges, lawyers, and juries, to the rules of evidence and proper courtroom decorum. Students will develop an understanding of the constitutional principles of rule of law, presumption of innocence, burden of proof, due process, rights and responsibilities, and the concepts of justice and authority. How does the literacy mock trial happen? The mock trial begins where actual trials begin, with a conflict or a dispute that the parties have been unable to resolve on their own. Mock trials may draw upon historical events, trials of contemporary interest, school and or classroom situations, or hypothetical fact patterns. Most mock trials use some general rules of evidence and procedure, an explanation of the basic facts, and brief statements for each witness. We've developed mock trials based on literature, from Goldilocks and the Three Bears, to the young adult book Monster by Walter Dean Myers, and the John Newbery Medal book When You Reach Me by Rebecca Stead. Most works of literature have a conflict or a gray area that can be your basis for the mock trial. For example, was Goldilocks trespassing when she entered the home of the three bears? Was she guilty of criminal trespass? What does a mock trial look like? To begin the process, have the class clearly identify the conflict. Then make the class identify the facts on each side. Afterwards, have the class identify the witnesses that already exist in the story. And lastly, have the class consider if there are any other witnesses you want to invent, and to what would they testify. Identify all of the people who have a role in the trial and what their role is. The judge presides over the trial, determines if evidence is proper or improper, gives the jury instructions about the law that applies to the case before the jury deliberates. The lawyers bring out the facts that put his or her client's case in the most favorable light. The witnesses give testimony about the facts of the case that are in dispute. The bailiff or courtroom deputy gives the oath to the witnesses, marks the exhibits, and helps the judge keep the trial running smoothly. And last, the jury hears the evidence, deliberates, and renders a verdict. As you have this discussion, begin writing the fact packet for the trial. Once this is done, you can work with the students on the various components. Our mock trial handbook provides you with step-by-step -step worksheets for each of the components. Let's take a look at this in action and hear what teachers have to say about the experience. I would definitely recommend that teachers implement literature-based mock trials in their classrooms. It would enhance learning 
It will bring about um, logical arguments. It will teach students how to, how to speak publicly. Implementing literature-based mock trials for teachers is a great idea. It's something that, I'll be honest, when it first came up for us, I was, oh, what's this other thing? One more thing for me to add. I can't have, I don't have time in my classroom for this, but I'm so glad that we did it. It really enhanced the learning in my classroom. Seeing the learning that the children did and how far they went with, the, with learning about the trials and learning about the literature. Before we do a literature-based mock trial, we do a scripted trial just to see how it goes, just to get familiar with the process. So the Brendel Center provides scripted trials already ready, ready to go that you can use to use to get your kids ready. And then after you get practice with some, with some scripted trials, then perhaps you can take one of the books that the class is familiar with or that the class has read before and then talk about how you would turn that particular story or that particular book into a mock trial and that's how we've done it so far. The thing that teachers need to remember, I think, is that it's not that much extra. It's not an add-on. It's something that enhances what you already do. And it's not going to be some extra piece of work. It's going to be something that makes your work more interesting, more exciting, and more learning for the children. Some of the benefits of implementing literature-based mock trials into uh, my classroom was that it allowed students to get a deeper understanding of the characters. Um, one of the skills that some teachers find difficult to teach is inferencing. So as the students get deeper involved with the characters and, you know, and particularly what the character does, what the character says, why the character um, does certain actions, um, and we bring those discussions about, it does give the students a deeper um, level of comprehension. The mock trials definitely engage the students in civics. They are more aware of, of a court situation and what jobs there are in a court. Um, that there's a bailiff and there's prosecution and there's defense and a judge. And knowing all of those things and knowing that they have rights and if they go, if there's a trial and they, if they are involved in a trial in any way, they have rights and they have someone to defend them. They also learn about the jury and how important the jury is. Not everybody is going to be the bailiff and not everybody's going to be the prosecuting attorney, but everybody could be on the jury. And realistically, we are all called to be on juries at some point in our lives. And to know how important that is in the system of a trial is huge. It's huge for them to know. They can connect um, what ha happened in Fantastic Mr. Fox. They can see that oh, Mr. Fox was put on trial and that connection to a book that they absolutely love is going to help them to retain that information. There are a lot of advantages to using civics-based mock trials in a literature classroom. The learning that the students do is so intense and, in, and deep and we always talk about with especially with Common Core the, the it's more depth not breadth and it's the depth that you go to to understand characters and conflict in a book so that you can defend them on a trial or you can prosecute this character on trial. It can get every student in the classroom involved, whether that student is an, uh, an advanced performer or a struggling student, it gets all students involved.